James Gaysbrook, welcome to Coventry, first of all. Um, how are you settling in in the area? Yeah, good, thanks, Chris. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of not really seen too much of the area. It's a little bit restricted like everyone else, but yeah, settling in OK, thank you. It's a little bit of a homecoming for you, isn't it? I mean, you're originally from Sutton Coalfield here in the West Midlands. Yeah, yeah, not not far from home, so reasonably familiar with all the area. But I've obviously you know, been away for quite a while now. Yeah, in terms of just your playing career, you know, predominantly down in the West Country, Bath and, and Exeter, um, those two clubs very much were, were on the up when you were down there. What do you, what uh, what do you take from learning as a player being in that environment into your coaching career? I suppose well, a lot lots of things. You know, um, I suppose all products of the environments we've been in. And um, you know, when I was at Bath, I saw kind of lots of change and different things over my nine years there, and um, lots of different kind of rugby influences as well uh, over the course of the time when I was there. So it was. Um, Although kind of sometimes a bit frustrating to have loads of different styles, but now looking back, um, there was you know there's loads of different images, which just broadens your kind of your your rugby opinions and gives you a good view of everything. And then obviously Exeter was a great experience for me, and you know t- took a lot away from that, and that was a hugely enjoyable experience as well. Off the field, Exeter are renowned for the culture, and you look at um, Ant Allen and, and Deeks coming from Leicester as well. Is that there's a you know, amongst the the first team coaching staff this year, there's a strong sense of that of, of having played in strong cultures. So, how does that um, impact what you're tr- going to, tr- as a group, going to try and achieve at Coventry and with with Roland and, and obviously Roscoe as well? Well, I think I think cultures are obviously they're built on people and and you know and behaviours of people and and built on good people and good cultures certainly are. And I think that's kind of the one thing we've we've obviously got. You know, we've got some good people that all really want to pull together and work towards the same goal. So. You know, I think that's a, a good starting point for us as a group. And in terms of defence, that's going to be, you know, that's your remit um, at Cov this year. In terms of what's more important, is it the culture of wanting to get up and fight for your mates or um, tackling properly? Tackling well, I think, technique? I think, kind of, you know, first and foremost, you know, as I say this a lot to the lads as well, the, the, uh, the most important thing with defence is attitude. You no, know, it's an attitude based thing. So, you know, that, that is kind of like your. First and foremost, your number one foundation to work to work from, and the bits like your tackle technique and your tackles and how you how your systems work and all that they they can come a bit kind of afterwards. But the first and foremost is definitely the attitude and how willing, like you say, how hard they're willing to work for each other. And in terms of from what you saw last year, and then also getting to know the lads um, via Zoom, uh, obviously you'd have preferred it to be in person, but you know you're getting to 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 meet the lads as well. You know what have you seen from Cobb on the outside and now on the inside? Obviously, there's some you know some real real strong foundations to work off um, with the club as um, as, you, as as I've seen the club progress the last few years and also obviously a lot more detail the last couple of months and um, and like you said the Zoom calls you know we, we've obviously like everyone else spent a lot of time as a management group the last few weeks um, planning and preparing and getting to know one another which is obviously a, a new thing doing it over Zoom as opposed to over video calls as opposed to um, as opposed to in person, and you know, it's been good to get to know some of the lads as well. You know, spend a fair bit of time speaking to the players, um, trying to get to know them so that we can get ahead of where we uh, where we would have been if we'd have kind of come in come in cold on day one. So it's been um, as much as the frustration of the lockdown has has kind of like you know kept us kept us waiting to get going. It has provided us an opportunity to to do a bit of work pre pre-season which we wouldn't normally get to do and spend some time with players and as a management group planning and preparing that um, that's going to definitely stand us in good stead when we're going to come in on week one. Do you kind of look at um, uh, sports like NFL and, and American sport where they have such an extended off-season I mean like the NFL plays for five months and then is off for seven so they go through this every year have you guys looked over there and gone well this is how they this is how they do things and uh, and in terms of that Ongoing preparation to get ready for a season. Yeah, so obviously, we, you, know, you know, Chris, Chris of and C has worked really hard towards kind of looking at the preparation part of it, and um, you know, we obviously take influence from how other teams have done things, but as well, you know, it's just quite a unique situation that we're in. You know, we we can't actually go and see the players or anything, so doing stuff over video calls um, and preparing them as best as possible we can. You know, the, Chris has put together good programs for the lads to keep them ticking over. Um, and so that when we come into pre-season, they're in good shape. You know, as coaches, we're putting together, you know, some small skill challenges and stuff and things for the lads to do to keep their minds engaged and as well keep them as prepared as possible. So that, like I say, when we come into week one of pre-season, we are, we're kind of ready to roll. 
In terms of, uh, we're touching your playing, obviously, Bath and Exeter, but, you know, coaching-wise, you have spread your net far and wide, haven't you? Yeah, I, um, yeah, and purposely so, you know, I wanted to kind of get out of what I what I knew, um, and, you know, it was a great opportunity to travel and see a bit of the world with my family as well, which is, which was also brilliant, because it kind of freshened me up after having, you know, a, 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 you know, a long career, so uh, that kind of, that really helped as well. Um, but, yeah, purposely so, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of, again, as I said before, about broadening my rugby influences and see as many different styles and different kind of rugby environments as possible. And, you know, I think that helps you. Not that you want to have all those things in your bit, but in what you do, but hopefully it was, um, helps you solidify your opinions by seeing everything and having a good broad spectrum of, of rugby influences. From the time in the Far East in Hong Kong, um, what would you, uh, if there's one thing you'd have brought back from it, what would it be? Oh, I suppose uh, obviously Hong Kong, and then obviously some time in Japan as well. And um, uh, I suppose the, the the clarity of what you're saying, you know, obviously like languages become a bit of a um, a challenge over there, and um, uh, that that's the one thing I took away from there. The other, well, one of the main things I took away from there, in that your clarity of your message, you know, it, it, things can get a bit can get a bit lost in translation, as they say, and that's definitely true. And so being real clear with your message, I think, is something. There's one big thing I've taken from my time over there. And finally, you're going to be at Butts Park on Saturday, um, as you know, volunteering some time uh, to help with the bottle shop, and, and you'll get to meet some cough supporters as well. So, how much are you enjoying? How much are you looking forward to that? Yeah, it's, I can't wait to kind of actually get in and do something. Even you know, <laughs> it, it's obviously not rugby related, but it'd be great to get to meet a few people and kind of show some goodwill around the community for the club as well. Um, and yeah, it would be nice to kind of get in and at least be at the ground. Um, having spent so much time on calls and everything with uh, with the rest of the uh, management group.